there's nothing in this world that can ever satisfy through every trial my soul will sing no turning back i've been set free Let us pray. Good morning, Father God. Good morning, Jesus. And good morning, Holy Spirit. Thank you. Thank you for this day that you have given us. We worship you, O God. We glorify your name and we exalt your name in our midst, Father God. Maraming salamat po. At patuloy kaming lumalapit po sa inyo upang ikaw ay aming papurihan, Panginoon, sambahin sa Espiritu at sa katotohanan. At bago, ko, bago po kami dumako sa trono ng inyong pumbiyaya, kami po ay lumalapit at nagpapakumbaba sa inyo 
Humingi po kami ng kapatawaran sa lahat ng mga pagkakasaan ng nagawa po namin. Sa isip, sa salita, at sa gawa. At patuloy ama na kami po'y nananampalataya na kami po ay pinatawad mo na ayon sa iyong salita sa 1 John 1.9. Patuloy po o Diyos na idinudulog po namin ang aming bayan, ang aming bansa. Nawa ama, kahabagan mo po ang aming bansa. Bigyan niyo po kami ng kapayapaan. Pagkaisayin mo po ang aming mga, ang, ang mga mamamayan ng aming bayan, Father God. Bigyan niyo po ang, ang aming mga leaders ng humble spirit. Magpadala po kayo ng tao na mag Bibigay po sa kanila ng inyo pong salita. Maghahayag ng inyo pong salita upang sila, Panginoon, ay makakilala sa inyo. At tanggapin kayo bilang Diyos at tagapagligtas ang kanilang buhay, Father God. At nawa, Panginoon, magkaroon sila, Ama, ng banal na, mag- banal na pagkatakot sa inyo. As you said in your words that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, Lord God. Ama, dinudulog din po namin sa inyo ang aming bayan. Ang, pag, uh, ang malawak ang pagbabakuna, Father God. Nawa, O Diyos, tulungan niyo po ang aming mga, mga health officials, Lord God, na mai, uh, ma, mabigyan, Panginoon, ng bakuna ang bawat bayan, Panginoon, upang uh, mabakunaan ang lahat ng tao at sa pamamagitan po nito ay makatulong para mabawasan at mawala ang COVID-19 sa aming bansa. Tulungan niyo po at bigyan niyo po ama ng karunungan ang mga mamamayan na tanggapin anuman ang mga brand ng bakunang ito. Dahil lahat ng bakuna, Panginoon, ay makakatulong upang matigil ang paggalat ng COVID-19, Father God. Idunudulog po namin sa iyo, O Diyos, ang aming pastor na si Pastor Arnel as si Sister Ceci, Lord God. We pray for their healing, Father God. You are the Jehovah Rapa, Panginoon. You are the great healer, Lord. Dalangin po namin, Panginoon, na nawa, O Diyos, basbasan niyo po ang mga gamot na kanilang iniinom na ito ay maging instrumento para sa kanilang kompletong kagalingan, Father God. Dalangin din po namin, Father God, ang kanilang pangangailangan that you are the Jehovah Jireh the great provider, Panginoon. Nawa, O Diyos, i-provide niyo po ang kanilang mga pangailangan sa lahat ng aspeto ng kanilang buhay. Dalangin din po namin sa inyo ang kanilang mga anak. Patuloy niyo mo silang kalingain, yakapin, Panginoon. At, at ganoon din po, O Diyos, ang kanyang mga mahal sa buhay, ang mga kapatid ni Sister Cecil at ni Pastor Anel. Lord, comfort them, Father God, in Jesus' name. Dalangin din po namin sa iyo, O Diyos, ang mensahero ng iyo pong salita, ang mabigyan niyo po siya ng kaalaman ng karunungan, Panginoon, na maihayag, Panginoon, hiwaga ng iyo pong salita upang ito'y aming maunawaan at maipamuhay ng bawat isa. Ama, maraming maraming salamat po at patuloy po, O Diyos, na ipinagkakatiwala po namin sa iyong kamay ang mga oras na gugugulin po namin sa online service na ito, Father God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and Amen. We pray that today's message will strengthen your faith. If this happened, we love to hear your story. Send your story to our FB page or you may send it to our personal messenger. If you want to pray for or want to ask spiritual guidance or would like to join a Bible study group or discipleship group, just message us at GCF Montalban FB page. Or you may direct your concern to Brother Carlo Asilo or to Pastor Arnel G. Aristoteles. If this ministry has blessed you and if you want to support this ministry financially, you may give your tithes and offerings through online transfer or you may deposit it to our Banco de Oro account with account name GCF Inc. and with account number 01022800 6618. You may also give your tithes and offerings to Palawan Express. Western Union, Cebuana Lulier, M. Lulier, or LBC Padala, under the name of Carlo Asilo. 
Brother Carlo will deposit your sent money to our church video account and will send back the copy of deposit slip to you for accountability purposes. Again, may the Lord bless you as you listen to the message today. Magandang umaga mga kapatid sa Sibap. Isang pribileyo po muli na makasama kayo sa umagang ito at makapaghatid sa inyo ng ating update tungkol po sa Siba Project Pag-asa. Una po na is kong pasalamatan in behalf of the National Office at ang ating NC at ang Siba Project Pag-asa Task Force. Salamat po sa bawat isa sa inyo at sa bawat iglesia na nagbigay na po sa ating project na ito. Tayo po ngayon ay meron ng nalikom na 18 million 500 pesos at ang natitira na lamang po para sa ating campaign na ito ay 2 million 500 at meron na lamang po tayong dalawang buwan na natitira hanggang June 30 para mabuo po natin ang 21 million so pwede ho kayo magbigay naghahanap tayo ng isang libong tao o iglesia na makapagbibigay po ng 2,500 each Ganon din, pwede rin nung hatiin. Kung hindi nyo kaya, di 1,250, dalawa ho kayo. Or kung apat naman kayo, 625 na apat na katao. Or pag hindi pa rin, 500, lima ho kayo. Hanggang sa June 30 po natin gagawin ito, mga kapatid. Salamat po. At alam ko po, ako'y lubos na nananampalataya kasama ng ating leadership na atin ho maaabot ang 21 milyong ito bago po mag June 30. Kaya nga po pala, maaari po kayo magbigay sa ating BDO account na Conservative Baptist Association of the Philippines. Kung yan ay cheque with INC, kailangan kompleto pong pangalan natin sa account number na 00163-801-5010. At sa GCash o Paymaya, ang atin naman pong number ay isulat nyo na 09338124232 Salamat po mga kapatid sa ating pakikiisa at sa ating pagsakripisyo para po sa gusaling ito na mapapas sa atin by June 30. Ito po yung ating Siba Project Pag-asa. God bless you all. Our scripture passage is found in Matthew chapter 11 verses 28 to 30. Again, Matthew chapter 11 verses 28 to 30. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. May the Lord bless the reading of His Word. Good morning. This is uh, Pastor Ross and I'm glad to join you this morning. Uh, your worship service. How are you? Well, if you're going to ask me how am I, usually when I'm asked, Or we ask each other how we are. Uh, usually, I do it in three ways. It's either I'm glad, or sad, or mad. Well, let me answer this three uh, in three ways. Glad because I have been vaccinated already uh, the other day, and uh, will be our next job will be on August. And then I'm sad because um, a lot of uh, friends and relatives have, uh, well, are, are sick and are getting sick. Also, uh, we have some friends, close friends, who have died and may be dying. I just feel sad for them. I'm mad because uh, up to now it's been more than a year already and 
and things are not seem to be improving. When are we going to end this pandemic uh, crisis? That's actually the question of everybody. And I can, I can feel for everybody. And I get so frustrated. What's happening right now is really very stressful. That's why the stress that we have right now will turn, we might, might, be, might turn into distress. And uh, consequently, it might even make you depressed. Well, I hope none of us will go through that. But uh, I know that uh, the, the situation that we have right now is really stressful. Well, others say that uh, stress is something that we need. And me too, I agree that there's no such thing as a stress-free life. We need stress because when when God allows us to be stressed, we learn a lot of things. We learn to trust in Him. We learn to do it better next time uh, as we go through the stress. But of course, uh, stress is uh, something that uh, it's very difficult to handle. That's why right now, let me propose to you a message that comes from my heart. And I've entitled it, Overcoming the Pandemic Stress. There's no way that we can live a life that is uh, stress-free, but we can manage or we can overcome the stress that we have right now that might lead us to distress and worse, depressed. It can depress us. So just allow me to share uh, three very important Bible verses or passages uh, that God has been speaking to me with you know, ever since, even before this pandemic uh, situation occurred. I have been uh, ministered to by God through this word or through His word. So, first is uh, in Matthew chapter 11, verses 11 or verses 28 to 30. It says there, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Jesus was speaking here. And uh, it was during this time that uh, he, he was surrounded by people, particularly his disciples. It was this time when uh, people's life was really uh, very hard. Many of them were economically poor. Many of them are, are, are already stressed because they are being persecuted. They are being harmed. And uh, particularly his disciples, many of them are really tired of uh, what's going on in their life. So when Jesus came and he started teaching these people, he started this ministry by teaching them, ministering to them, healing them, and even delivering them from, uh, from the demonic possession, people started coming to him. But uh, during the close of his uh, uh, teaching, he gave this final offer knowing that these people were so stressed up, he said, come to me. Yeah, come to me, all of you, or all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. I underlined or underscored the word come. Come is the invitation of Jesus, because there's no other way that we can be able to manage or overcome problems in life that will bring us stress if we don't have Christ but we need to have we need to come to Christ trust him at his word in order for us to find rest he said come and I will give you rest that's the promise my friends I have been practicing this and applying this passage many 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 times all over many many years uh, even before, especially until now. 
No one, nothing can give us rest, a genuine kind of rest, if we don't have Christ. Perhaps it's time for us, for you and me, to come to Christ and then claim that rest. And when he said rest here, he was actually particularly saying, I'll give you physical, bodily rest. Because uh, if you're tired, no? and being tired and you're not able to sleep well, that will really develop into, into stress. And you will be distressed. And you might even become depressed. So, my friends, that's what we need to do. We come to Jesus and we find rest in Him. Problem is, many people know, they believe uh, the facts and the truth about Christ. Problem is, they don't come to Him. They know that Jesus is there offering His, his rest. They don't come to Him. Instead, they rely on themselves. They depend on somebody else or something else. Well, it's about time, particularly this pandemic uh, time, that we need to come to Jesus and trust Him at His word. The next is, uh, we see here from the passage is, He said here, Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. Now, he said, take my yoke. It means that uh, we have to take his yoke by removing the yoke that we already have right now. Yes, my friend, every person living here, living in this world today, has a yoke upon him. And this is actually the yoke of worldliness. If you do not know Christ personally, if you do not have Jesus Christ in your life, you have that yoke. But when you accept Him as your Lord and Savior, He replaces that worldly yoke with His yoke. Yes, it's still heavy. It's still burdensome. But this yoke is upon the Lord. Or is from the Lord. When we say yoke, yoke is... is is, is uh, something that is put on in a, in, in a working animal uh, around his neck and then as the uh, the farmer or uh, guides the working animal around the farm or around the milling that yoke is very needed in the same way Jesus wants to put his yoke upon us so that he will be able to guide us in the way that he wants us or he would want to direct us it's still burdensome but i tell you he himself said he is gentle and he is humble you know we don't usually say and it's very unethical to say i am humble but here jesus said he is actually humble in heart and it's true i think he's the only one who has the right to say he is he is humble in heart and if we do that, if we take his yoke or we, we uh, uh, trust him at his word, then he will give rest not only for our bodies, but also for our souls. You know, there's so many people who may be well rested, they sleep all the time, but they're, uh, they're not actually experiencing the kind of rest that they need because their minds are are uh, troubled no? but in Christ and with Christ and by his grace if we put upon his yoke and trusting him no? then he promises that he will give rest both to our bodies and to our souls you might be asking what kind what kind of yoke is this I believe the yoke here that Jesus wants to put on us is the yoke of the his word the Bible yes it's still difficult it's burden, it's burdensome uh, in some ways for us to trust him and obeying his word there are some passages in his word that is very difficult 
and burdensome to obey. But by His grace, we can do that. You see, it's His promise. First, He gives the invitation. You come to me and trust me. And then, take the burden of my word, take my yoke, and I give you rest, both for your physical body and even for your soul. We need to do that. If you haven't done that, you need to do that now. You need to trust God. Because my friend, if there's ever a time that you need to trust God most, it is now. It is today. So the invitation is there. You come to Jesus. Take His yoke. And His yoke is His word. It's burdensome, but He's light. He's gentle. Things will, will, uh, will get easier as He's promised. No? Because His burden is lighter. You trust Jesus for this. The second, my friends, is uh, the passage in Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 and 7. Let me read that. It says, Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. The Apostle Paul wrote this to the church in Philippi because they themselves were also experiencing stress. They were also being uh, persecuted by uh, their former religious uh, peers, and they were also being persecuted by the Romans, the church particularly. And they were very anxious. Uh, as they are as they await the the coming of the Lord but as the Lord tarries Paul realizes that uh, he needs to write them and guarantee them and uh, and minister to them with this word and he says here do not be anxious do not do not do not worry anxiety will rob you of the joy and the peace in your heart and I believe it's true because I have experienced that you know what when I became a Christian the first uh, this is the first verse that I have learned and I have learned to appreciate as I applied it and that was many many years ago in 1984 and even today as I go through problems and troubles in my life particularly now as I go through stress of these problems I become anxious I become worrisome I go through anxiety, then God reminds me of this very passage that I should uh, trust Him with and apply. And uh, the command here is, do not be anxious. Instead, we pray. It says here, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. So the negative command is, we should not worry at all. Do you remember Jesus in Matthew chapter six? He he uh, he assured them that they need to be they need not be worried about their felt needs and even their real needs because he's there to provide for them. Even today, ladies and gentlemen, Jesus is with us. He provides protection. He he also provides the things that we need, and most of all, his presence is with us. He's only a prayer away. So why do we need to be anxious? Because if we are anxious, it shows that we are not actually trusting Him. If we are worried, if we are anxious, we're actually trusting ourselves or something else or somebody else. Then here comes the Lord offering His Word. Come to Him. Let's trust Him. And we we need not be anxious of anything but we pray we just talk to him unburden uh, our load to him and his promise is in verse 7 he says there and the peace of god which transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in christ jesus the command here is pray the command is pray. You talk to Him as you trust Him. And His promise is peace. 
But this is no ordinary peace. This is the peace of God. This is the peace that comes from God. And what kind of peace is this? Paul says, it transcends all understanding. It simply means this is the kind of peace that no one can understand. You and I cannot understand. I cannot even explain it uh, well. I cannot even teach it. But you and I can experience it. We don't need to understand it. All we need to know is it comes from God because we trust Him. We talk to Him in prayer. We carry on His burden, no? His Word. We obey His Word. And God guarantees we experience His peace. Peace is uh, uh, what others might describe as uh, peace is the absence of trouble. That's what others describe it. But you know, the real peace is not the absence of trouble. Real peace is the presence of God in the midst of trouble. If Jesus is in your heart, He's in the midst of your life, then you have peace as you trust Him and as you pray. So peace is not the absence of trouble. It is not the absence of sickness. It is not the absence of anything that puts you down. But peace, genuine peace, is the presence of God in your life as you recognize Him. So you talk to Him. He gives you peace peace that you cannot understand and this is the kind of peace that will guard our hearts and our minds if your hearts are troubled then you are in trouble and it's also very difficult to make decisions any kind of decisions particularly uh, hard decisions if if your mind is not uh, in order you know? if you don't have peace of mind but if we have the peace of God, the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will simply guard our hearts and our minds for us to make decisions and to think well. Consider it, my friends. The command is to pray, and the promise is peace. The last passage I'd like to share with you is in Colossians chapter 3, verses 15 to 17. It says there, Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body you were called to peace, and be thankful. Let the, pe let the word of Christ dwell in you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom, as you sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs with gratitude in your hearts. My friend, as you come to Jesus, you trust Him at His Word. His Word may be burdensome, but His Word will guide you, will guide you and me. You know? And as you pray to Him, as you talk to Him, He guarantees peace. And that peace should rule in our hearts because that's the kind of peace that Christ, got, that Christ gives. And in verse 16, let the Word of Christ dwell in you richly. Let us never forget, or let's, let us never neglect the Word of God, the Bible, in our life. We should always be engaged in the Word of God. There are two disciplines that we uh, hear in our, in our life, no? two disciplines that we cannot live without. First is prayer. Second is God's Word. Without these two, we will always be in trouble. And God has graciously provided them to us. We pray, we trust in Him, we uh, obey His Word, and the promise is rest, and of course, the promise is peace. And in everything that we do, in verse 17, and whatever you do, whether in word or in deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father, through him anyone who is in Christ and anyone who who trusts Christ will always give his time will always do things in his name 
And if we do that, regardless of the trouble that we face then and even today, and as we will be expecting more, uh, perhaps crisis to come, then let Christ rule in our hearts. Let us remember His Word and obey His Word. And let's do it all in the name of the Lord. With this, well, I should say, we would be able to manage and overcome our stress. Yes, we need stress. But if you are not able to overcome it and manage it, it will, it will lead you to distress. And you might even become depressed. So in conclusion, my friends, with the question, how can we overcome this pandemic stress? Just let me summarize or review first. We come to Jesus in prayer. He's just a prayer away. Second, we carry his burden in obedience to his word. Instead of putting on this worldly yoke in us, let's put on his yoke, his word. Quite, maybe quite difficult to obey, but we can as the Holy Spirit works in us and through us. So we come to him, trusting him in prayer, we, we carry His burden, obeying His word, and His promise is rest. Complete rest. No? He is our sufficiency. Rest for our body and for our spirit. And He also promises peace that is beyond anyone's explanation and understanding. And that peace will really guard our heart and our mind. So my friends, Think about it. Consider these passages. And I know God will bless you and you'll be able to overcome this stress in this pandemic crisis. May God bless us all. Thank you. Thank you for joining us for today's worship. Join us again next week for another lesson. If this service has blessed you, we would like to hear about it. Just send your stories. And if you want to support this ministry financially, message us at our GCF Montalban FB page. Once again, thank you. Have a blessed and fruitful week. God bless you.